Good morning. It is Phil to the Brim and it is Saturday, August 1st. Yes, we made it into the month of August. Wow. Well, the Holy Spirit is really stirring my heart to remind us today to prioritize Jesus. Prioritize Jesus. And when I was inquiring of the Lord, he was reminding me that when we prioritize Jesus, then our attitudes and our actions are birthed in the heart of the Lord. Rather than it being something that we just do in our good flesh. We, you know, there is good flesh and bad flesh. We can do a lot of good things in our flesh. But the fact is this, we need to birth, have our attitudes and actions birthed through the heart of the Lord, or else we can easily go astray in, even when we're trying to do good things. And the story that he gave to me is a story of Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 11, verse 38. And this is what it says. Now, while they were on their way, Jesus entered a village called Bethany and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was continually listening to his teaching. But Martha was very busy and distracted with all her serving responsibilities. And she approached Jesus and said, Lord, is it of no concern to you that my sister has left me to do the serving alone? Tell her to help me and do her part. But the Lord replied to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered and anxious about so many things. But only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, that which is to her advantage, which will not be taken from her. This gives us a great illustration about how our responsibilities in life can pull us away from prioritizing Jesus, how we can feel the demands of life, how we can feel the expectations, even from ourselves or from others around us that can pull us from prioritizing Jesus, sitting at Jesus's feet. And we can then start functioning in a very self-righteous way. And we find this in Martha's life that she begins to judge people around her because she thinks they're not doing the right thing. And she gets a spirit of judgment. And, you know, that happens so easily when we look at other people and say they're not doing the right thing and I am doing the right thing. Because we've left sitting at Jesus' feet because our attitude and actions are not birthed in the heart of God. The fact is this. This is a challenge for our lives daily is to always prioritize Jesus, no matter what demands we have on our life. And sometimes we have very great demands. You know, Mary was doing something very significant. Actually, in that era, in that time, in the first century, women were not disciples of rabbis. They were not allowed to sit at the rabbi's feet. And so we have something significant happening here when Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. Not only is she prioritizing Jesus and drinking in his teaching, wanting and desiring to follow his ways, but there's something even beyond that. There is a stronghold being broken, the stronghold that women were kept from being disciples. And this is so significant because Jesus is making a statement to Martha, who was the older sister, who was the sister in authority in that home. This was her home. He was making a statement to her and saying, you know what? Mary is doing the right thing. You know, Martha was functioning from the old wineskin, so to speak, that this is what women were supposed to do, to do these activities. That was what was right. And Jesus was breaking down a stronghold and saying, no, Mary is doing what is right because she is sitting at my feet. I am doing a new thing. The Lord was declaring a new thing for women in that era and that he was causing um, Martha to have to adopt that new thing by what he declared. You know, it's so important for us to prioritize Jesus. And this is what Jesus was establishing for 
the women in that era, in that time, is prioritize me. And then from out of that prioritizing, do your attitudes and actions function? Because there's a spirit behind what we do. The truth is this, we can do the right thing in the wrong way. We can say something that is right, technically, but how we said it was wrong because it's not functioning from the heart of the Lord. You know, Jesus actually confronts the church in Ephesus in Revelation about losing their first love. Revelation 2 verse 1 says this, To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, I know your deeds and your toil and your patient endurance and that you cannot tolerate those who are evil and have tested and critically appraised those who call themselves apostles and in fact are not and have found them to be liars and imposters. And I know that you who believe are enduring patiently and are bearing up for my name's sake and that you have not grown weary of being faithful to the truth. See, they were good at truth. They were good at truth. But something happened. But I have this charge against you that you have left your first love, which is me. You have lost the depth of love that you first had for me. See, the fact is we can do the right things in the wrong way if we have left prioritizing Jesus because our attitudes and actions, even when we're saying we want to do righteous things in the earth, need to be birthed in the heart of God. And that takes sitting at Jesus's feet, being his disciple, adopting his ways, following his ways. And so this is what in Revelation, it continues to say about the church that lost its first love. So remember the heights from which you have fallen and repent. Change your inner self. It starts down in here. And do the works you did at first when you first knew me. Baptize us in love because the heart of God is a heart of love. Even when we go about doing the right things in a wicked world. Otherwise, I will visit you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Listen, Jesus' first priority for us is to sit at his feet. To sit at his feet and drink him in. And have him change our inner self. So that as we do our responsibilities, go about what he's asked us to do, it is birthed in the heart of God. This is our challenge today. I love you. God bless you. Pray about this word.